Hello my crafty friends and welcome to a really fun Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going to create a two-page layout playing with the products from the latest release by Art by Marlene. You know that I absolutely love her style. I also share lots and lots of projects using her new collections. This collection is already available at Joggles and you will find all the links down below. So I have here some of the products from the latest release. The release is called So Fisticated, so fun. And it's all about the sea and the underwater world. I love that the stamps give you big images which make uh, great focal points for your art journals. And uh, in the collection you will find fish, submarines, mermaids, shells, lots of fun images in the style of uh, Marlene so that you can build your own underwater world. And look how cute this octopus is. You get also corals, lots of bubbles. And I'm browsing through them really quickly. You will find the links down below if you want to check them out. And here is a lovely lobster. These are the two die sets. A lovely fishnet, great for mixed media projects, as well as a um, set that gives you all those dies to create your very own really whimsical tags. This set includes lots of uh, dies so you can layer your tags and make them real dimensional. Now here are the stencils of this release. I am going to use this one. You can use parts of it if you like, like for example the fish, which I'm going to use today, or just the bubbles. Another one is the corals, absolutely stunning for creating a lovely background. And it's not just for underwater scenes. Now here is another lovely one, really versatile for creating backgrounds. This is the one that I will be playing with today. And here is the anemone one. But again, it is quite versatile because these anemones look actually like flowers as well. Now, in this collection, you will not get 12 by 12 pattern papers. This collection comes with a pad. This is an 8 by 8, including the lovely colorful art by Marlene. And finally, my favorite, the paper elements. So, as always, you will get lots and lots of fun cutouts to play with. All you have to do is to just pop them out. And I will be playing today with some of them, mainly those corals from this page here. But before I start, I want to show you something really fun. If you want, you can pop out those mermaid tails and you can place them on other designs. So, for example, you can have a mermaid cut. And before I start with my project, I'm going to show you what I usually do when I'm working with those uh, blocks of cutouts. I usually attach a little envelope at the front cover. That's because I usually pop out lots and lots of those images to audition them and see if they work for my project and I end up with many cutouts all over the place. I don't want to lose those, so I have an envelope at the front cover where I can put back all the cutouts for a future project. Ok, I'm going to put everything aside and let's grab the art journal. Today I'm working on my art journal that has lots and lots of uh, little booklets inside. I did use this one in a previous uh, project and I'm going to work on the next page. This is thick watercolor paper, so I'm going to work exactly at the back. It does take mediums nicely and I like that you can easily lay this booklet flat. Now I do have some inking from a previous project. I don't mind, I'm going to cover it up completely. Now, when I got those stamps, I instantly knew which one I was going to use first. So I absolutely love this fish as well as the submarine. And uh, the fish is going to be my focal point for today. Let's work on the background and create an underwater world for him. So for today, I'm going for a bright and colorful page. So I want to use uh, bright colors and not uh, my usual Distress Oxide inks. That's why I'm going with Dilutions. When you are using Dilution sprays, you know that the color is going to stay nice and vibrant. And here are the colors that I chose to go with for the background. I'm going to align them one on top of the other, starting from purple. And as I go towards the top, I will end up with the lighter blue. If you don't have dilutions, you can always do that with your watercolors. I'm not going to spray water at all on the paper. I haven't prepped the paper, especially when you are working with uh, sprays. You want the paper to be absorbent. You don't want to cover it up with um, gesso, for example. The purple I used is called uh, crust crepe. The pink one, which you don't really see, I mainly <laughs> covered it up with blue, is um, bubblegum pink. Then I went with the darker shade of blue, which is London blue, and I finished it off with Vibrant Turquoise. So I'm really happy with how that looks. I'm going to use my heat gun to speed up the drying process and make sure that this first layer of color is completely dry. 
Now I'm going for the ghosting technique with this stencil. I'm going to lay it on top and then spray a generous amount of water over it. I'm not moving the stencil at all. I'm leaving that uh, water to do its job for a few seconds and then with the paper towel I'm going to blot it, just pick up all the excess water. This way I'm lifting some of the ink from the paper. It's not visible at the moment but as it dries you will see that the design will start to appear. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side, again a generous amount of water, leaving it for a few seconds to react with the page and then I'm going to blot it with my paper towel. Again here you can't really tell where that design really is, however trust me once I grab my heat gun and start drying out those pages, the design will magically appear. And with this technique the more you leave the water to react with the ink underneath, the more vibrant the design is going to end up, I just like to have things quite subtle. Now to create some depth and uh, interest on my background I'm going to do some more stenciling. This time I'm using this stencil with the fish and I'm just going over them with my black distress oxide. You can use any ink for that. I just had that black one on my desk and it was handy. Another way to go for this step would, you, would be to use um, modeling paste. If you have black modeling paste that would add a texture and dimension on your background. I decided to stay away from paste for today. But um, it would also look nice if you had a glitter black paste that would add uh, some shine at the background as well. For now I'm happy with the amount of fish on my background, later on I'm going to add some extra ones. Now I'm going to do the stamping and work on the focal point, so I have here a block of watercolor paper, this is the exact same paper as the one on my art journal and I know that because I'm using Art by Marlene uh, paper. This is important for me because I'm going to color the fish in a similar way as I did for the background using the same uh, mediums and I know how the medium is going to react and that it is going to give me the same look and feel as my background so everything is going to match nicely. I did stamp the image with archival ink just because I want this to be permanent and I'm going to stamp it one more time since I am using my Misty after all so that I have a nice crisp impression. And now for coloring again I'm going to use dilution sprays. This time I'm going to use them not in a form of a spray but instead as watercolor. And of course you can do the same job with your watercolors. I just love the vibrancy of these inks that's why I decided to use them. I like to add that just a blob of color on my glass mat and for that I'm using a pipette. I'm using the same pipette for all those uh, jars, I just clean it up on my jar of water and then move on to the next color. I'm kind of creating my very own palette there, no need to add too much, this uh, color really is very concentrated and it goes a long way. Now here I did some thinking on uh, which colors I want to use for coloring my fish and of course I'm staying away from uh, the colors that I used for the background. This way I know that the fish is going to stand out against the background and it's, you know, it's going to look nice and vibrant.
And with the magic of video editing, my image is already colored. I'm using my scissors to cut around it and I'm also fuzzy cutting the difficult parts. I don't care if I cut them apart, I can always put them back together with glue directly on top of my page. And now that my focal point is ready, I'm going to place it on top of my page and I will try and find different bits and pieces to dress up my page a little bit. And for that I'm going with the colorful corals from this page. There are two pages like this one, so you get many of those corals to play with. Plus there are stamps that have the similar designs and you can use those if you like. I just go with this one because I find it uh, super easy. Since I just have to pop them out, play around with their position and then I'm going to stick them down. Now one thing you need to remember with these cutouts, sometimes they do have a, a, a white border all around, sometimes they don't. In this case with the corals they do have the white border. If it is a cut I don't mind, if it is my art journal I don't want them to have a border and that's why I didn't cut out a border for the fish. And since I want to have everything consistent, I'm going to use my scissors and fuzzy cut that white border. And I did pick up uh, many elements for my page. I'm not going to use all of them, but you can see that I chose a few hearts. I did use some starfish and uh, even flowers. I popped out flowers. No one says that we cannot have flowers on, my, on our underwater world. Just add whatever makes you happy. If you don't want to fuzzy cut around that white border, you can use it as it is, but make sure that you have a white border around the face, so that you have all the elements consistent. Another way to go is to use a blue marker or a marker that matches the color of your background and go around that white border to color it in. This is another way, quick and simple. Now I'm going to put everything together, you can see I'm just uh, placing all the bits and pieces of the face together as if it was a puzzle. And once I have played enough with all those uh, corals, I decided where everything is going to go. And as I was playing with that, I was mainly looking at the colors. You need contrasting colors next to each other. Don't add all the yellows together and all the pinks together. This is going to make your page look more colorful and brighter. I'm sticking everything down with my Burly Art glue just because it has a very fine tip and it is really easy for me to put everything together this way, but of course you can use your matte medium or any other type of glue that you have. Just remember that if you are quite messy, the glue is going to react with the ink that you have behind. Look at it as if it was watercolor and uh, it may create mess or ghost effects. As always, I did use my scissors to cut out any excess paper and here is an afterthought. If you want to do the next step, make sure that you do it before you stick down the corals. So here I just re realized that it would be fun and to create more depth if I used some of the stamp corals to add uh, some stamping at the background. This is going to give some depth and uh, for that I'm using a dark blue ink. You can go with black if you want as well. And you can stamp that two or three times without even re-inking. This is going to give a lovely depth effect, but uh, of course I had to be very careful so that I don't stamp over the coral since it was an afterthought and I should have done this step previously. So you will see I'm going to bring in a post-it note here just to make sure that I don't stamp over my images. But I think you get the idea, do as I say and not as I do. In any case, it worked just fine at the end. So the first color that I used comes from the same stamp set as the um, big fish that I'm using for my focal point. The stamp set is called Deep Sea Diving. You will find links down below. And the color that I'm using now comes from another stamp set which is called Sea Creatures. Now in almost all of the new stamp sets, you will find lots of bubbles. Here I'm using uh, bubble stamps from the Sea Creatures stamp set and I'm going to stamp them all around and I'm making sure that I don't have identical stamping. So notice that I'm using the same stamp but I change angles. Sometimes I'm only going to stamp only two of the bubbles, three of the bubbles, change positions, rotate the stamp just making sure that I don't have identical stamping all over my page. I don't like this look. In this stamp set there is also a second set of bubbles. These are smaller and uh, I just mixed and matched those two stamps. Now of course there are little details that are bothering me, mainly because I did that background stamping after sticking the corals and I'm just correcting some areas that it didn't stamp so well with my marker. 
And now I'm going back with a stencil that has that uh, school of fish and I'm going to uh, ink up some of them here and there on my page just mainly where I have too much empty space and I like to have them as if they are coming from behind the corals. And for the next step I'm going to have some fun with my acrylic markers. Now here is a collection of my acrylic markers. I have the Posca ones that I love to use as well as some from Pebio. And I mix and match them uh, depending on the color that I need to use. Uh, both of them really work just fine and they come with different colors of nibs. You will find links down below if you want to start the girl collection. I'm going to first color in the bubbles. And uh, I need to use my white Posca for that, make sure that they are nice and white. They are not going to be super white, just because um, the paint is always going to react with the background. But the trick that I normally do is add a first layer of color, let it dry and then go back on top of it. You will see that it's going to work just fine. Then I'm going to bring in even more colors from my acrylic markers to spice up my images using mainly uh, the same color but just a different shade and going over all the cutouts. And remember these are acrylic markers which means that they are going to stay nice and vibrant on top of everything and they are also opaque. And just like always, I finished off my page by adding my highlights with my white gel pen. I'm going to add a quote. This time I'm going with a word. This is from the Mermaid stamp set from the new collection that says Thalassophile. I just had to use this word. It is completely Greek because it comes from the word Thalassa, which means sea, and Philos in Greek meaning friend. So it is actually friend of the sea. And did you know that today is uh, International Oceans Day? So I think that my page has perfect timing. And of course that was completely accidental, but I absolutely love when things like that happen. I did use some masking so that I can stab both lines away from each other. This way I can cut them into strips and I can place them as two different elements on my page. I always like to use a thin black marker and outline my quotes when they are in strips like that. And uh, for this page I am going to stay away from white splashes. I think it is beautiful as it is and I do have the white bubbles at the background. However, to finish it off and to add an extra texture, I'm going to use my glossy accent on his mask which is going to turn it quite milky at the moment, but trust me, it's going to dry completely clear and it's going to look nice and shiny at the end. And now here is where I'm having so much fun and I cannot leave this page alone. So again, I'm using my thin black pen and I'm just drawing some sketchy lines around the page to create kind of a border. I'm not trying to keep them straight. Instead, I'm trying to make them kind of wonky and imperfect. And this is going to be the finishing touch for today's page. I had so much fun playing with the new release. I will be sharing lots of more projects. I have so many ideas since you already know that I absolutely love Marlene's designs.
So I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Don't forget down below you will find links to everything I used, as well as a link to the whole collection. Don't forget to leave me a comment, to like the video, it really helps, as well as subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you for spending some time with me today, and I hope you'll all have a lovely day.